Hey friends, it's Alex here at The Code Wolf again. I'm back from a bit of a burnout break after working on some other projects, but it's good to be here making videos again. And for this video, we're actually going to look at a new feature from the upcoming .NET 8 release, which is Blazor server-side rendering. This is a pretty cool feature. And as a quick side plug, the channel's actually approaching 1,000 subscribers, and so if you enjoy this content at all, please hit that subscribe button. I've got some plans for bigger and better content down the road, and the subs really help out a lot. But back to Blazor for right now. All right, so a few super quick slides, I promise. So with .NET 8, you'll be able to develop Blazor apps that are entirely client-side, entirely server-side, or both. That's right, we now have full-stack development with just Blazor. Now you might be thinking, well, we could already do this using Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor Server, but that's not entirely accurate. At their core, both of these options were still focused on creating a client-side experience without a true server-side rendering option. To better understand this, let's quickly recap how these two existing hosting models work, and then explore the additional new approach coming in .NET 8. So in terms of Blazor hosting models, first we have Blazor WebAssembly. When the browser makes a request to load your app, the server sends back your application DLLs and a lightweight version of the .NET runtime built on WebAssembly to the browser. The app files are then interpreted by the .NET runtime and executed entirely on the client. As the user navigates the site, navigation and other interactions are intercepted locally and all handled in the browser. The app can optionally send background HTTP requests to web services to retrieve additional data as needed. Second, we have Blazor Server. In simplified terms, when your site loads, this model sends a small set of files to the browser to bootstrap your app and establish a SignalR connection back to the application server over web sockets to render the page. User interactions are then continuously sent over the circuit, changes are compiled on the server, and then those updates are rapidly sent back to give the illusion that this is all behaving like a client-side app. Blazor Server is a hybrid model that provides the experience of a client-side app while offloading some of the work to the server and allowing the app to interface directly with other backend services. Well, starting in .NET 8, we have a third option, which is full server-side rendering of Blazor components. Honestly, you can very loosely think of this setup as Razor pages, but with Blazor components, if you're familiar with that part of ASP.NET. In this architecture, there is no WebAssembly, there is no SignalR circuit, the user just makes a request to the server, it compiles a Blazor component, and then sends the response back as a standard HTML response all in one go. And as the user navigates to other pages, this same process repeats for different components. As you might have guessed, currently this approach limits the amount of dynamic interactivity and doesn't provide the experience of a single page app, such as responding to on-click events and rapidly updating the UI. There are supposedly plans to support that in the future by combining server-side rendering with other Blazor functionality, but we won't worry about that right now. So essentially this new approach gives you the ability to write full-stack apps using Blazor. For example, you could create a few simple routable pages on your site that are just Blazor components on the back end. Pages that need a more rich client experience, such as a shopping page, can still be written using an interactive client approach. .NET developers have already been building hybrid apps using Blazor and Razor Pages or MVC, but now you can do it all exclusively with Blazor. Now this architecture allows for all kinds of other benefits, such as being able to render out a component as an HTML string on the server and inject that in various places in your app architecture. You can also specify Blazor components as a return type from controllers. I'm not going to get into all the different use cases in this video. Enough slides, let's just see how this works in action. To get started, you'll need to install the latest preview version of .NET 8, which at the time of this recording is version 4. So just head over to .NET.Microsoft.com slash next to get the latest preview version. You can also always specifically download preview 4 to make sure you're able to follow along without issues if you're viewing this at a later date. Server-side rendering will probably remain the same conceptually for a while, but the syntax and exact feature set will probably change over time. Once you've installed the .NET 8 preview, 
navigate to an empty directory on your dev machine inside of the command line. And then let's run the command new web dash O and give the app a name of blazor server rendering or something. And then let's CD down into that directory and say .NET new razor component and name that my server component. And this will just add a new component to the project we just created. Finally, you can open the app in VS Code by running the code period command. Of course, you can also open it up in Visual Studio if you prefer that approach. Just give it a second to load the project and we should see our familiar .NET structure on the left. Nothing new here yet. Well, let's take a closer look at that component we just created, which at this point is just a standard Blazor component. We can add some paragraph text in here to just say hello from the server side. And then there's a couple tweaks we have to take care of to enable server side rendering. First, let's add the at page directive with a slash server side URL, which is the path that we will use to reach this component in the browser. This directive already exists in previous versions of Blazor. It just makes the component routable, meaning that we can reach it from its own URL versus being nested on a parent page of some sort. Nothing new here. Next, we have to implement the iRazor component application interface and pass in the name of the component as a type parameter. So let's take care of that. And this part is new in .NET 8 and registers the component for server-side rendering. Supposedly this syntax might change to something more friendly by the time .NET 8 releases, so let's keep an eye on it. Now lastly, we have to make a couple tweaks to our program file, so let's head over there now. First, we have to register our Razor components on the builder object, so let's say builder.services.addRazorComponents. And finally, we have to map the endpoints for those components on the app object by saying app.mapRazorComponents and pass in our component name one more time. If your project is not able to find the component, just add a using statement at the top with the namespace of your overall project. I'm guessing some of this syntax might also be adjusted over time, but again, we'll see. And that's really all there is to it. It's really this easy. Now, notice that we also have this minimal API endpoint here for the homepage URL. I'm going to leave this here to show how easily we can mix different types of ASP.NET application models together. So let's run the app from our terminal window with the .NET run command and give that a moment to start up and then investigate this over in the browser. Remember, you can always control click the link in the output to jump right out to your site. So when that site loads, initially we see the hello world message from our minimal API endpoint. Well, we can also request our Blazor component and have that rendered server side by navigating to the slash server side URL path that we set up. And there are component loads as expected, but the interesting details can actually be discovered over in the browser tools. So let's open those up and then head over to the network tab. I'll refresh the page a couple times and you can see that this just looks like a standard web request and response. The browser sends a request for our component and the server responds with the rendered HTML for that URL. Again, very similar to Razor Pages or MVC, but unusual for Blazor. The fact that this looks so normal in the dev tools and behind the scenes is really abnormal for a Blazor app. It's easier to understand why this is so unique if we look at Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor server versions of this same app for comparison. I've already gone ahead and created those, since that's not really the focus of our exercise here. So let's just jump ahead and explore those in these new tabs at the top. So first, we have an out-of-the-box Blazor WebAssembly site open to the homepage. I've already cleared all my browser cache to demo this properly, so let's see what happens when we do a hard refresh. Now over in the dev tools, you can see all kinds of traffic as the browser downloads all of the app DLLs and the necessary assets to get this app running on WebAssembly. Once they have been downloaded, this component is rendered client side, not on the server. Now, obviously most of these get cached after the first run here, but this is still a vastly different hosting model and experience from what we saw with the simple Blazor server side rendering request. Our whole app is sitting here in the browser. Well, let's switch to the third tab here and look at the same example in Blazor server. In this case, when I do a full refresh, we can see some initial assets are downloaded to set up the connection to the server and manage updates, but the most interesting part is hidden in the WebSockets tab. Here we can see logs about a SignalR connection to handle rendering app updates. 
The actual HTML was compiled on the server, but it's using a SignalR infrastructure to still simulate a client-side app. In this application architecture, Blazor Server is smart enough to only render the fragments of HTML that change based on user interactions, whereas full Blazor server-side rendering always renders the entire page at once and sends it back, limiting interactivity. So hopefully this provides a good look at the new server-side Blazor component rendering in .NET 8 and provides some useful context in comparison to other existing architectures that we've had for a while. I'll be delivering more content for .NET 8 as it approaches, so thanks for watching, and please hit subscribe to support more content like this.